Hi guys, this is Michelle from Virtual Hand Care and in this video I'm going to share with you my top five <laughs> trigger finger treatments. Let's go. So when it comes to trigger finger, it causes a lot of pain, a lot of catching, locking, snapping. Sometimes it can progress to where your finger just stays locked down and even you trying to manually bring it straight just won't work. It is so important to make sure that you do go see a hand surgeon to make sure that you do get the right diagnosis of trigger finger because there are a few other conditions out there such as Dupuytren's that can mimic trigger finger finger so you really want to make sure that you know exactly what you have as well as the level or the stage of trigger finger that you have too because there's four stages of trigger finger or four grades of trigger finger each one kind of progressively worse so you do want to make sure that you know the stage that you're at but also make sure that you do have trigger finger so that you can get the right treatment for you Okay, so treatment number one is splinting. It is so important to make sure that for at least six weeks, even sometimes eight weeks, that you have no triggering, no catching, no locking of that trigger finger at all. Because each time you trigger, each time that finger locks and gets stuck down, that's adding more inflammation to that tendon sheath that surrounds that tendon. So we wanna try to reduce as much of that as possible. And so by preventing triggering, the only way to do that is by splinting. So I really like the oval eight for that. And research shows by immobilizing just one joint, whether it's your DIP, your PIP, or even your MP, simply immobilizing just one of those joints can be enough to prevent triggering. So that's why I really like this oval eight because it's very small. You can still use your hand with daily activities and you can see and choose because it comes in so many different sizes. You could put the oval eight on your DIP or you could also put it on your PIP joint whichever feels like it helps prevent you from triggering. Now, there are many other types of splints. There's other splints that prevent you from moving at the knuckle. So you'll be able to actually bend more at the PIP and DIP, but it won't let you go all the way down in a flexion and bend at the knuckle. Those little splints can also be very helpful because it prevents your tendon from contracting all the way which makes that swollen area go through that pulley. So you're looking to block one of those joints by either using the oval eight or an, what's called an MP block trigger finger splint. Those work good too. Now you also have the option of going to see a hand therapist and have them custom make a splint for you as well. That can be so beneficial, especially if you are trying different types of splints and nothing seems to be working for you. Just skip all this and go right to a hand therapist and they can make one just for you and for your finger. Now, trigger finger treatment number two is taping. I just did a video that I will link here of how to use Kinesio tape to tape for trigger finger. Now, this is very beneficial for somebody that does not want to have some kind of hard splint, some external splint on their finger, but they need something to prevent the trigger finger. I do like the option of using a harder splint like the Oval 8 for your first couple of weeks and then progressing into the tape as you start transitioning into using your hand hand a little bit more. So the tape goes directly on your hand and the way that the tape works is you are using three pieces of tape, one to inhibit the flexor tendon, that's the FDP, that's the one that gets stuck. But then we apply a separate piece on the back side. however that's applied in a facilitation. So that's trying to get the extensors on the opposite side to work more to counteract the tightness of the flexors. And then we do a third piece, which is a space correction over that pulley and help provide a little bit more support as you are using your hand. And you will find that taping is so effective. However, many people don't like to tape for a long length of time. So it's often good to alternate between wearing some kind of a splint and taping. 
Trigger finger treatment number three. This one is more of a strengthening exercise. Now there is new research that shows that doing an isometric flexion exercise to your FDP tendon can help stretch out the pulley and therefore give a little more space and a little more room for your tendon to move and therefore not trigger. To do that exercise, what you wanna do is you want to get yourself a towel or a washcloth, and you want to weave that washcloth or towel underneath the finger. The most important thing you wanna remember with this exercise is to make sure that your knuckle of the trigger finger is placed into about 45 degrees of flexion. As you can see, only my MP knuckle, so just my knuckle, is flexed. I'm not curled at the PIP or the DIP. So say my middle finger is the finger that I have trigger finger. And actually you could do this to the finger that has the tape on it as well. If you decide to go with wearing a ring, I would remove the ring and then do this exercise. What you're doing is you're going to apply an isometric contraction to just the tip of your finger. So to do that, you take your other hand and you apply some resistance to the tip of the finger and you hold a couple of seconds, hold, 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 and relax it. And you wanna repeat that about 10 times. So I'm pushing down with this hand and I'm resisting with this fingertip. What we're doing is we're causing the whole flexor tendon to contract. And since it travels all the way down here, it's gonna bulge a little bit right down here as it goes through that A1 pulley. So what this does is this helps contract that tendon and bulge that tendon to help stretch this pulley out to give us more space when we go into flexion. And it's about a moderate amount of pressure and it should not cause any pain or locking of the finger. And of course, if you had other fingers to do this, if you, if say you had your ring finger, then again, you would wanna weave, uh, you know, something in between the fingers so that again, your finger is placed in MP flexion and then you would apply some contraction. And again, if it's your index finger, same thing. You may wanna kinda pull that up there and provide some contraction, or if it's your small finger that's triggering, then again, you might want to put a towel up underneath it that way to get yourself in at least 45 degrees of MP flexion. And then you would provide some resistance that way. And I would hold that contraction for about three seconds, but repeat about 10 to 15 repetitions and do that about three times a day. Trigger finger treatment number four is massaging and massaging the web space in between the finger that is triggering. To do that, we want to spread our fingers out as far as you can go, and then you want to interlace those fingers together. And you wanna do a little bit of massage in there to try to make sure that you can get all the way down into that web space. Once you can do that, then you want to really push into the web space and then relax the fingers. Now don't feel like you have to curl the, the finger down, but we just want the fingers to relax. And you can even get a little ball and place it right in that area where you feel that trigger right there and then you can interlace the fingers and just work on putting that ball and massaging up and down into that pulley area as well as massaging into the web spaces and you can even take an ice cube and do a little ice massage on that area as well or take the ball and put the ball in the freezer and massage over that area but then take the ball in your palm, interlace those fingers, get some good space between those fingers there, and then just gently relax them down. And you can stay like this for you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds. 
and relax. And you can massage all up and down the fingers, all up and down the whole entire flexor tendon. And you can do that for a few minutes as well. Okay, finally, exercise number five for your trigger finger. I would grab a pencil, a chopstick, I have a paintbrush here. Uh, this one is starting to introduce a little bit of active motion to your finger, but yet it's still protected motion. Remember, when you trigger, you usually trigger when you go into a full fist. So we don't want to do that yet. In order to get some active motion going though, we want to do some protected motion. And I like to use a pencil or like I said, a paintbrush or chopstick for that. So say my middle finger is the one that is triggering, but I want to get a little bit of motion going with it. We want the tendon to start lightly gliding down in this area. We don't want to get too stiff. We want to interlace the pencil or the, the chopstick, the paintbrush, whatever it is that you're using. We're going to place it on the front part of the finger that is triggering. So for me, it's my middle finger and I'm gonna place it on the front. So see how I have it interlaced and it's a little bit more back compared to my other fingers. Now, if you have a trigger finger that's your ring finger, then yours would look more like this. And the pencil is on the front part this way. Just helps keep it on there a little bit better. And then for the small finger though, you have to kind of hold it just because it'll move around a little bit for you. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my middle one like this. So what we wanna do is we wanna slowly work on starting some light active motion. So when you're doing light active motion, you wanna think about only moving at about you know half of what you normally move. We don't wanna be pulling hard down over the pencil. What we're looking to do is just nice and lightly use the pencil to block our full flexion. So we're getting just a few joints here. We're getting the DIP and the PIP of that finger to move. And that allows a little bit of movement of that tendon so that we don't get stiff and make sure you go all the way straight through that so you can get a good stretch. And that also helps contract the back part, those extensor tendons. And again, curling down. And again, when we curl down, make sure that wrist is back just a little bit and we're not curling hard and we're not curling all the way in a full fist. We're just lightly curling over that pencil and up. And you would want to do about 10 or so of those as well. If you found this video helpful, do please give it a like and let me know which type of these exercises and which type of these treatments seem to work for you. Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, do please give it a like and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. And don't forget to check out these videos here that YouTube is suggesting for you. Thanks for watching.